Hello, my name's Emma Wise and I am the writer and director of the Abolitionists um, Anthology. Um, we already have filmed chapters one and two and we are just about to embark on chapter three, which synonymizes the amazing um, Sarah Parker Amand. Um, a good friend of mine um, was really, really keen to audition for Sarah Parker Amand. Um, she's called Gemma Thompson. Hi, Gemma. Hello, Emma. I am Gemma Thompson, and as Emma said, yes, it was an actual privilege to be asked to audition for this role because it's Sarah Parker Amand is somebody that we need to know more about. I completely agree, completely agree. So I'm just going to ask Gemma a few questions about why she got involved with the project and talk a little bit about Sarah Parker Amand. So Gemma, what kind of stuck out for you in terms of wanting to get involved with this project? Well, I think it's just basically that it struck a nerve very close to home for me. Um, obviously, with me being of mixed race, I do have a family background that I will go into a bit later. That, you know, is not the most nicest thing to go into, but it's something that everybody really needs to know about, including Sarah Parker Ramond. Everybody's heard about Rosa Parks, but not so many people have heard about Sarah, which is weird, really, to be honest, because she actually lived in the UK for quite some time. You know, she saw the UK and Europe doing her lectures, her talks, and just basically getting it out there about the absolute awfulness that was slavery. And there aren't really words to describe what Sarah Parker Amond and others went through at those times. So this is a story that just really needs to be told. Amazing. So this is really, I, I feel by what you're saying, it's really a passion project for you. Do you have a, a familial connection in terms of slavery in your family? I do, yes. Um, I'm really, really lucky. I'm one of the few people who can say I've actually met my great grandmother. Um, and my great grandmother, Granny Bell, was an amazing woman. She died in 2010 at the age of 103. So she's very long lived. And obviously, the time she was born, her parents were still actually slaves. Um, she could remember as a very, very, very young child, I think it possibly would have been one of her formative memories, but she could remember the day that her parents were freed. Um, and to me, meeting a member of my own family whose parents were enslaved, it's just something that I still to this day can't get my mind around. I mean, obviously, I knew that there was a huge possibility I had ancestors who were slaves, but to be able to talk to somebody in my family that remembered that. And when I looked deeper into it, some of the things that had happened to members of my family at the hands of their slave owners and masters, it's just, it's really, really difficult to, to learn about. Um, very small example, but great granny Bell's mum, Nanny Haywood, she was actually in charge of her master's livestock, specifically the chickens. So being in charge of them is a little bit more than just feeding and watering them and putting them away at night. If anything ever happened to any of those chickens, if one of those chickens died for whatever the reason, natural causes, illness, whatever, great granny Haywood would be punished for that and the punishment for that would be she would have to wear the corpse of that chicken on a string round her neck until it decomposed enough to fall away from the body. Now when you go into it this could seem to be you know not that bad when you read some of the accounts of slaves being raped and beaten and tortured sometimes to the death but when you stop to think about how much psychological damage that must have inflicted, not only on her as an individual, 
but in the minds of the collective, it just, I, I can't grasp it, you know, and that was my family member that it happened to, but to find that out and to know that I'm playing the part of Sarah Parker Ramond, who tirelessly, literally from the age of 16, spoke up and against slavery in any forms, you know, slavery for colour reasons, slavery for religious reasons, slavery for the fact that you were born a woman. You know, she wanted people to rise up and be able to take the place in society without being judged for the colour of the skin. Amazing. Amazing. Well, the story that you've just imparted to me about your great granny Belle and her mother. Gosh, wow. Yeah, absolutely. It has a, a really, I mean, yes, not only is it a physical aspect of abuse, it's also a very psychological aspect of abuse and that must have must have embedded itself in the social conscience of these slave colonies of these family members um and it is very much a, a mental health issue um as we know uh, unfortunately slavery slavery goes on to this day um so the fact that sarah park ramond wasn't born a slave she was actually born free which is, is in one respect incredible fantastic we've got yeah. progress um but on the other hand <laughs> Um, she was still very much discriminated against because of her colour, because of her heritage and because of the fact that she was a woman and a learned woman. She was incredibly well educated. Um, when you've been, obviously, I've bombarded you with information about Sarah Parker and Mond and you've been amazing at coming back to me with any questions. Is there anything that sticks in your mind about this incredible woman? Um, just knowing what she was up against, just knowing the sheer mountain she had to climb to change social opinion. I think the start, the, the fact that she started this crusade at the age of 16, you know, it, it's just, it's a 16 year old black girl is how she would have been viewed and she would have been viewed as such an upstart and for her to be brave enough, you know, she, she first spoke at a public event with her older brother Charles in Broughton when she was 16. Um, the fact that she was born in Salem, Massachusetts, which doesn't have the greatest history when it comes to women who are slightly different, you know, and that she still was brave enough to talk out, out about this is just, it's astonishing. Um, and I love how she came over to Britain. Um, I know that in Britain, we passed the Slavery Abolishment Act in 1833, I think, yes. if I'm correct. That's which right. Was seven years after she was born, you know, so she's seven years old and she's still living in a country where slavery was still legal and it would take another 30 years for America to then decide to follow on in Britain's stead. And it actually took Sarah just another 26 years before she came over and set foot on British soil. So while she was here, the slavery was still legal in America. And then when they did abolish it, let's be honest here, it was still happening. Happening, Although it was deemed illegal by law, there were so many loopholes and no real enforcement because nobody cared enough at that time other than the slaves, who although they were deemed to be free, still were not given a voice in America, other if it weren't for people like Rosa Parks and before her Sarah Parker Ramond. And 
it's just it, it, it's mind blowing that she was brave enough to do this back then. You know, we we think we're brave now, but we don't have to face those sorts of hardships. Yeah. And it's I have experienced racism in my life, and I know my father experienced lack of job opportunities because of his colour. I mean, he's he's somebody I look up to because he pulled himself up by his bootstraps. He got degrees. He ended up being a magistrate. And not only that, but one of the most respected magistrates that was around at the time. He's retired now. But if it weren't for people like Sarah Parker and Mons, who knows what could have happened to my, my father and his Granny Haywood and his Granny Bell. You know, it, it's mind-blowing the achievement that one young girl because let's face it 16 is not an adult one young girl set out to do and did you know it's um the kinship she felt in britain um sarah actually had a friend back in the u.s called abby kelly foster i know that she wrote to her to just say how inclusive it felt in britain and how she'd been accepted by white women as a friend for the first time and that's somebody in their 30s who's lived three decades on this earth and had nothing but scorn and ridicule and been put down by white women. And she crosses the pond, which must have been a scary journey in itself, <laughs> yes. and finds herself accepted. That's something that I love about her journey, that she was very vocal about how forward we were in Britain in abolishing slavery and that America needed to follow in our footsteps. Indeed. Right. Indeed, yeah, courageous, inspiring, yeah. just in awe, really, in awe of, like you say, the, the time, the period, um, very unfriendly kind of social demographic in America um, because they were making a lot of money here, especially in, in Britain. You know, Britain was still making a lot of money in the colonies. Um, mm so it, yeah she was up against a lot but she had a lot of support um as we will find out in uh, in chapter three uh, of <laughs> the abolitionists which is going to be amazing so mm -hmm. thank you for your insight Gemma thank you for sharing with us today and your own personal story it's remarkable um that people have these connections and I think we should never lose these connections because it, it creates empathy within um our modern day life to be able to still remember you know these were people these were feeling human beings who were subject to to these ab absolutely abhorrent acts of of abuse and torture um but yes thank goodness for people like sarah parker I'm on thank goodness for people like you who bring her to life put flesh on the bones and um yes want to uh, bring her story to a whole new audience so thank you for joining me today and um, give everybody a wave and we'll see you very soon in chapter three. You will, looking forward to it. Thank you, Emma. Thank you, my lovely.